So today I want to drop an absolute bombshell on you, one that dismantles one of that certain Aquaman starlet's main narratives. And this one, it's about Australia and how J.D. supposedly lost his finger. See, according to that certain Aquaman starlet, the thing that happened, oh, it happened right here. It happened out of view. You couldn't see it, but there was a phone right here against the wall that's out of sight. Not this phone right here, mind you. No, it can't be that one. Nope, there's a phone hidden right out of you. If you could just see it, we could prove what's going on. Well, after years and years of speculation, we can totally see what's in that house. And guess what's not there? There's no phone whatsoever. There's no place for a phone. Ah, oh, this, it totally debunks that story, pointing out that it was a straight-up lie. The beautiful thing about this, too, is that this house, it hasn't changed hardly at all in six years. I'm going to prove this. I'm going to absolutely decimate that story. Buckle up. This is going to be a crazy one. Mm, fun times, huh? Fun times indeed. So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. And what I want to do here is I want to introduce you to the scene of that proverbial crime. I want to show you how this supposedly happened according to her. And then I want to debunk everything. Now, this is the layout. This is the layout from back when. The layout is exactly the same to this day. And there are even items in picture as reference that exist six plus years later. I'll show you that in just a second. If you look here, though, right here, we have an arrow pointing in orange. This is where our first picture was taken. And against this wall, we supposedly have a phone that's out of sight. She's going to describe it to us. So I want to read through that description. Listen here. These are her exact words. Now these, they come from day 16 of the Fairfax trial. Quote, there was a wall-mounted phone on the on the wall to next to where my head was, and he went punching the, the wall to like realizing that the phone was there, and he picked up the phone, and he was screaming, he's raw, like at the top of his lungs, screaming, I bleeping hate you, I bleeping hate you, you ruined my bleeping life, and screaming at the top of his lungs, and picks up the phone and starts bashing the phone against the wall, against the wall where I was just being held. And I remember kind of having some distance on on what was happening and watching him do this, and it was like his energy had shifted, and I was that phone all of a sudden. And he was just over and over again, smashing this phone into the wall, over and over again, screaming at me. And I was watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back. It was just breaking to pieces. And I remember thinking this phone is disappearing. He's smashing it to smithereens, just going into the wall. Now, if you look here, this is where that supposedly transpired, right? You'll notice, first of all, this is the day of everything. You have Ben King, the guy that's cleaning up the scene. There is no evidence of a smash phone whatsoever. I mean, you can see the floor. You can see it very, very clearly. No pieces of a phone. There's no plaster, no residue. Nothing at all has happened. Now, there's another phone. If you go up, you can see the layout. You know, we're going down the bar. You'll actually see a phone in this picture here. Now, this phone, she says that that's not it. Her own description. This is also from her testimony. Quote, it was a, like a antique. I don't know if it was antique, but it kind of looked old fashioned, like an old fashioned heavy. It looked heavy. I didn't pick up the receiver, but it looked heavy. When I was watching it break, you know, it looked like these really heavy glass, excuse me, really thick, heavy, not plastic, but a bake light or something heavy, a material on it. That's my best guess. Now, there's two things that I want you to notice in this picture. Number one, when you look at that phone, she described the phone that she said was broken as, quote, mint, green, and cream 
Bakelite. So that's number one. You're going to say process of elimination. That doesn't work here. And there's another thing that I want you to notice. This is going to transfer over into a brand new picture. You see this clock right here? Well, check out this picture right here. Notice in the back, there's a clock that looks exactly the same as the clock that you just saw. Here's the thing, though. This, it is a modern picture. This house just went on the market. But if you look at the layout, you'll notice the lighting it is exactly the same. The layout to this place, it is exactly the same. I mean, even the clock is the same. Nothing at all seems to change about this residence. Now that's a theme that continues into this bombshell picture right here. I cannot stress the significance of this enough. Why? Because one thing does change in this picture. It's not the items that you'd see. It's the way that you're standing. You can actually see a little more perspective. And well, when you look over your shoulder and you start examining the wall behind you, you'll notice something missing. There's not a phone in the picture at all. Now, when we're looking at this, too, I want to really stress how things, they don't change. See the three bar stools here? This is exactly how J.D. said that they set up when he was there. One of them was askew in the picture and the aftermath being team took, but... They've been pushed on nice and neat. Again, it seems like somebody who doesn't like or doesn't want change. You'll notice the bar area. It's exactly the same, too. Both bars. I mean, that, that's perfect. You have the same type of countertops. And when you push all the way to the back, you have the same lighting against it as well. When you look over at the wall, though, you'll notice something about it. You have no phone. I mean, there's no type of phone at all. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a phone that, number one, that would be a utilitarian product. That would be something that you would use in the area. So it would be a wall that would be wired for use. You don't see anything that suggests that, by the way. It doesn't look like it would be on the blueprint either. But you notice there's not a phone in there. It doesn't look like the type that you would have there anyway. She talked about an antiquated set talked about something that would be green i mean does that fit the motif at all of course not and again this is somebody who hasn't changed up anything including the clock in the picture i think like i said that is very very significant when you look I don't think that you would have a phone in this area at all either i mean if you look at the lighting in the background that lighting would create type of buzz effect that would be really annoying through one of those old handsets but even if it wasn't annoying again you don't see any phone here it's in an area that doesn't change yeah you tell me what that means about somebody's story i'm going to say that well it's just like so many other things you start looking at it and it goes right up in smoke. But anyway, let me know what you think about this. As always, appreciate you. Check out links in the description too. We could always use your help. Yeah, you being here, thank you. Appreciate you. I'm going to leave it here. See you soon.